So here we are at Val's Drive-In again. 68 degrees, 9.19 p.m. It is very humid tonight. As one would expect in August. I'm wearing shorts. It's not cold. And we have a nice dinner menu here. Pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how long they're going to be before closing, usually when school starts. So, anyway, I got a couple of drug addicts across the street. Messed up on something. That woman looks like she's in bad shape. I just really don't know what to make of it all, folks. I really don't. The world is changing in a way that I don't want it to, that I don't like seeing. I feel helpless, like most people do, in solving it and fixing it. But these people are the walking dead. So I'm going to cut back across here. And we're going to go on our walk. And I crossed the street on purpose because I just don't feel like dealing with people that are messed up like that. And uh, so anyway, welcome to another episode of Walking with Jaybo. wonderful world of drugs. It also drives up the crime. So, and this is a decent neighborhood, so I just don't understand it. It's something I don't want to see. And, uh, that woman looked messed up on something, and she had a, an eye that was all swollen, almost shut. I don't even know what that's all about. She was barely walking. It's a sad waste of humanity. Anyway. We're walking tonight. Like I said, it's humid, 68 degrees. I am wearing cargo shorts and a t-shirt. Feels cool, but it doesn't feel cold. And it definitely feels humid. Not too long after walking tonight, I am going to get sweaty. So, well, the wonderful Democratic National Con Convention has begun in Chicago. Um, I've already had some protesting fanfare outside where the police have been arresting people. And uh, they tried to tear down a fence, a barrier to the convention. The Democrats are trying to keep these people out because it will sully their wonderful event. So, I was just watching that, live streams on YouTube and uh, live streams elsewhere. Uh, there's a really cool uh, unfiltered, uncensored live streaming that happens on Odyssey. Um, Odyssey actually just announced that they are getting rid of their advertising uh, because they're doing pretty well with memberships now, since YouTube has been censoring people, uh, they're going to other places. So there's a lot of online streaming places like Twitch, Kick, which is K-I-C-K. I think uh, Donald, Donald Trump broke a record on there with a young streamer named Aiden, who I guess Baron Trump introduced 
Trump to do a uh, event which went very well so anyway uh, online is where it's at right now Trump's TikTok is doing very well so we will hang in there and see what happens with everything So the DNC is underway. I watched a couple of speeches by a couple of speakers. Uh, there's Congressman Representative Robert Hernandez, who was going on about Trump, saying that he had lost both of his parents to COVID and blames Donald Trump. And I'm really sorry that he lost both of his parents. But uh, statistically, Biden has had more people die on his watch. And also, uh, this guy mentioned Trump telling people to inject bleach. So that is a complete lie, fabrication. Trump never said that. And what happened was, is he gave a press conference. He was talking about uh, light infusion technology with ultraviolet light, which kills viruses. And he was talking about injecting light as a disinfectant inside the body. Well, of course, the media had to say that Trump was saying to inject disinfectants, which isn't what he said. And uh, Lysol on Twitter issued a statement saying, do not ingest Lysol products to treat COVID. And uh, the media ran with that. And now all these people still believe Trump said to inject the bleach. So I don't know how Lysol got turned into bleach. I don't know how very smart people, um, I don't know how very smart people like Paul Harrell, uh, he's made a post in the past about Biden talking about having a double barrel shotgun on his porch and saying politicians don't know what they're talking about. And then he referenced the Donald Trump injecting bleach and it kind of annoyed me, it's annoyed me since, since the media is so good and deceptive at what they do that even a Paul Harrell will believe that. So it has since been debunked. Uh, the major news networks have said that's not true. They fact checked it, finally. And um, what's really funny about that is uh, both Snopes and PolitiFact said that that wasn't true two months ago. And then now they say, mostly, when you say that uh, Trump said to inject bleach, it says now, mostly false. Because now Kamala is the candidate, they went and changed what they said already. And it, this is all a big joke. Uh, the corporate media is a friggin' big lie. It's fake news. It's um, well-organized, orchestrated uh, bullshit. It's a psyop. It's uh, whatever other word you want to use, <clears throat> where they cooperate with one another and coordinate propaganda. And we see this in Europe and the UK. We see it in Australia. And uh, we have it here. They are completely astroturfing an entire presidential campaign for a terrible candidate, Kamala Harris. And, 
You know, and don't underestimate it because Joe Biden was a terrible candidate. And they covered for him too, and he got elected. So take this very seriously. Do not be complacent. Right now they have poll rigging going on because the DNC is this week. Kamala has to go in there looking good. And in fact, I was watching a little bit of CNN earlier and MSNBC. I know, I know, I watch it so you don't have to. And uh, I boycotted them for a long time. But right now it's important to get their version of what they're selling. So you know how to attack it on the internet with counterattacks, if you know what I mean. So they are pushing the Kamala's got all the momentum right now, which is false. So Trump is leading in Pennsylvania. He's leading in Wisconsin. He's leading in Nevada. He's leading in Arizona. He's leading in North Carolina and he's leading in Georgia. Just because the media is saying these are in play doesn't mean they're in play. And they've been spending a lot of time this week talking about how Trump supporters are jumping ship for Kamala. That's friggin' nonsense. And whatever the case is, like I said before, um, Kamala is not blowing the doors off Trump. So, we just saw a lightning flash. That's concerning. Uh, considering my radar says everything's clear. So, I should have time to get my walk in. Now I'm scared. I'm a scared. I do have my flashlight with me tonight. Well, that's thunder. Well, hold on a damn second. We weren't supposed to have any storms going on. another lightning flash that looks like it's skirting off to the west which would be that way oh I see some eyeballs I see eyeballs looking at me. Oh, that's a little deer. We had a little deer looking at me. All right, well. All right, well, we might have an adventure tonight. Most of it's off to the west. We got a little poof off to the left. I hope it keeps missing. I hope it keeps missing. It's a big, big gobbledygook of rain. It's not supposed to rain here until later this evening. These apps are reasonably, reasonably accurate. So, 
but seeing lightning and hearing thunder is not good. All right, well, the way this weather is moving on my radar, it should miss. There is a little piece of it that's close nearby. So we will walk. I don't see any eyeballs in the dark staring at me, which is good. But anyway, the DNC is underway and uh, we do have fake polling. We're going to see Hillary Clinton, and Michelle Obama, President Biden is supposed to speak. Hillary Clinton is supposed to speak tonight, as is uh, Michelle Obama and Biden. So, there's hundreds and hundreds of protesters in Chicago, they're never going to show on the media. But like I was saying, you can check that out with uh, some live streaming on the internet on Odyssey, which is O-D-Y-S-E-E. -E. You can do a search for it. There's another website called Odyssey that pops up. But when you click on the one that has live streaming, that's the one. So... Flashlight on until I'm out of this this stretch here. I think we'll take a longer route tonight. That was a pretty good lightning. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen, counted to thirteen, so half of that is six and a half, so that's about six and a half miles away. Six and a half miles away. My license plate said Berkey. Bergy. B E R G Y. this way. Lightning always looks a lot worse at night because you can see the whole sky light up even if it's 10 miles away. But it's kind of going parallel with Lewiston Auburn skirting it on the west heading northeast. So it should miss us. At least I hope so, anyways. So 
So an interesting thing, remember I was saying, uh, keep an eye on the DNC convention. You don't necessarily have to watch it because the stuff that's happening inside is not what's, uh, what's important. Well, maybe not because here's the thing. Today, inexplicably, it was announced that Biden was going to make a, a farewell speech at the DNC tonight. At least that's the info I have. I don't know their complete scheduling, but I do know that Biden is supposed to speak. They're supposed to be doing a commemorative 50 years of service for Biden, thanking him for his great patriotism and all this other garbage. Um, the Republicans were kind enough to release today that their inquiry into impeaching Biden is complete. And they have found that they have proof and evidence that Biden grifted $27 million as vice president and also held classified information without having the authority to do so, which we already know he did. And that the special prosecutor, her, wasn't going to recommend charges because the jury would probably just see Biden as a feeble-minded old man so, he gets off with that. But, $27 million from four different countries, China, Russia, uh, Ukraine, and Romania. The Biden family has enriched themselves using fake shell companies as well as fake loans, which there's no loan records of these supposedly eight loans made, totaling a few million dollars. There's no record of those loans being made. There's no records of them being paid back because they don't exist. No payments were made. Um, Congress has subpoenaed the payment records and all this other stuff and it's all made up. So the Bidens got filthy rich off Joe Biden's office as vice president when he was with Obama. God knows how much Obama made and Hillary. So these people enriched themselves in office. I hope the Republicans are going to impeach him just to make a point that that won't be tolerated because the Republicans may lose the House this coming election, or they may keep it and strengthen it. We really don't know yet. I am not seeing good information either way. Right now, uh, polling is all nuts across the board. That includes for the Senate. Um, you're gonna have to pick companies that you that you trust polling companies and then that's it that's just all you're gonna have to do because that's all you're gonna get I am gonna trust Trafalgar Trafalgar and Rasmussen because both of those have been unkind to Trump in the past because they base themselves on being honest and both of them have Trump ahead right now and CNBC also has Trump ahead. And uh, there's another company called Sigma or Sig Sigmatic or something like that. That is also a company that had Trump ahead favorably. And um, a lot of the polls that, you know, I wish RCP would cut out these ridiculous smaller polling and the polling done on the internet. One of them is even a poll done internationally. Like, I really don't care of Trump's favorability of somebody that lives in the UK that isn't even going to vote. So, you know, we're seeing a lot of that garbage. And it affects the average. Then we had the New York Times Siena poll that, uh, was bogus by five points and it skewers the average 
the New York Times Siena poll. Notoriously unreliable and leaning to the left. So, wow, there's no wind tonight. No wind tonight. We're gonna go on our walk, mind our own business, as uh, Tim Walls affectionately says. Here's the thing you need to remember. Right now, these poles are fabricated. They're astroturfing popularity for Kamala that doesn't exist. Uh, she did a campaign stop today. There was a lot of empty room in there. People didn't show up. Um, their stadium rallies they were doing, almost certain they were paying people to show up. Uh, so they bust in some homeless people. That has been documented as fact. And also, um, she did a campaign stop at a store to buy Doritos. And they went in there ahead of time and they cleared out the customers that were in there. And they brought in their own people. That has also been documented as fact. Okay? So. That stop you saw where she stopped in to buy a bag of Doritos, that was all fake, orchestrated. And she also stopped in somewhere else to buy something uh, where they prepare food. They also kicked the people out that were in there as well. And they brought their own people in, bust. They had a bus with their own people supporting the campaign going in there. So you could have black people in there and Asians and people like that. It was all fake. So right now you cannot trust anything you see. The media is not going to call them out on it, even though they know that's what they did. And you have to remember these are the same people that in 2020 uh, used a fake Kamala. A fake Kamala and a mask because it was COVID. So she actually got caught doing that because Kamala was seen somewhere else and this Kamala showed up to campaign for Biden. Completely fake, fabricated, and when confronted about it, she left with her Secret Service detail. So completely phony, fraudulent. Everything about these people is fake. So. That is just uh, what's going on. They have no shame. And uh, so anyway, uh, Trump did a factory stop today. It was packed. Kamala did a stop and it wasn't packed. There was a lot of empty, empty room in there. So the truth will come out, be patient. They don't have a COVID pandemic to use as an excuse for Biden's white circles, which you have to admit was a good campaign idea until people saw Trump campaigning. And uh, so, crazy. So astroturfing a campaign, that just simply means um, it looks like grass, but it's not grass. So it looks like a campaign. It looks like Kamala has momentum. It looks like people are supporting Kamala. It looks like she's filling stadiums. It looks like she's polling well. And the media is promoting her like she's Obama 2.0, literally. I'm not making that up. I haven't seen this excitement since Obama 2.0. Then we have uh, we have this incredible corporate machine back in Kamala, which I don't know why. You know, I really don't, because 
Oh, I'm feeling raindrops. That's it, I'm getting wet. I did not expect that so soon. So I am going to open my uh, radar app and see how much of this we're going to get. It doesn't matter because I'm walking and I'm stuck in it, so I'm going to be stuck with it. I just don't want lightning. I have a short window when this passes. So I think what I'm going to do, because, boy, this really developed quickly. So I'm going to have about, well, you get to see what I'm doing on my walks. I'm going to bring my predictive app. The rain's lighting up. And I have to gauge whether or not I have enough time to get my five miles in. Or not. So I'm gonna go on my hourly. 10 o'clock thunderstorms, 11 o'clock rain. So according to this, I have about an hour before it really starts raining. So I have now walked about two miles uh, so I might might hang a left up here instead of going right like I usually do to walk six miles and I think I'll walk five it's my prerogative I don't feel like getting rain soaked tonight I don't mind walking in the rain but I don't want to get soaked and have lightning going off. And that's really my main concern is the lightning. So I want to make sure I get my five miles and I don't get killed. So I think the best thing I could do is hang a left up here. And we'll do a five mile walk. Which is okay with me. raining right now but it is humid tonight and I am sweating pretty good so it actually feels pretty good so that's what I'm gonna do I've decided I don't want to die from lightning. I don't want to do it. And this is how it goes sometimes. At least you're walking on what you physically want to do. I'm at two miles right now. two miles. I know it's at least two and a half miles back this way. So I'll have around four and a half to five miles. And I do have just an hour window before it's just going to be a downpour steady with lightning and thunder and all kinds of garbage. So I think this is the smartest thing to do. starting to get wet now. Lightning going off in the background there. 
Like I said, I only get nervous with lightning because at least five times in my lifetime I've almost been struck. So there's like a set precedent to respect it, okay? I'm not going to be all manly about it. Are you afraid of no lightning? And then get killed. But if there wasn't any lightning and it was just raining, I would walk in it because I don't mind walking in the rain. It's raining hard right now, actually. But That person going by absolutely did not see me or pay attention even though I'm wearing reflective sneakers Excuse me. I'm not going to melt. Ooh, that was pretty good lightning. want to speak too soon on the melting part. I don't want to get hit with lightning. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18? Well, I'm not hearing any thunder. Whew, I'm getting wet. I am getting rainified. You probably recognize this part of the walk. It's not the route I wanted to take tonight, but that's what we're getting contingency plan that's all it is as long as I get some form of walking in tonight on this Monday Eve I knew there would be a risk of rain tonight, but I thought it was going to be a couple hours from now. This really creeped up very quickly because I checked the radar about 15 minutes before leaving the house. So this blew up rather quickly, which is what thunderstorms do sometimes. Lighting up a little bit. A tad. Just enough to get the roads wet. 
But it is going to be a pretty good soaker later this evening. Yeah, boy. So, what was I saying earlier, before it started raining? Oh, yes. Very important. As we hit two and a half miles. <coughs> What's very important is, Joe Biden's supposed to speak tonight. We just hit some lightning. And, uh, what's the significance of that? Well, Photographs showed up online earlier and some video from reputable sources that there were U-Hauls, U-Haul vans at the White House. Nobody knows why. There's been no announcement. There's really no reason for them to be there. And typically the only time you see U-Hauls at the White House is when a president has finished his term and he's moving his stuff out so we hear some thunder there was speculation on the internet because the internet does these things again no official information that Biden might be resigning he might be giving a speech tonight which he is giving a speech and he may be resigning the White House did announce that Trump, uh, Biden was going to give a speech tonight and that he and Jill Biden would not be staying at the convention for the rest of it. Biden's going to give his speech and then they're going to leave. So, it was also announced that Kamala Harris is not going to stay. So, make that of it what you will. It is no secret that Joe Biden is very angry that he was forced out. I think part of the agreement of him stepping down was the DNC said, we're going to give you a big send off. We're going to have this beautiful video of all your achievements, which I don't know what the hell that could be. And they are going to play this tribute to him for his 50 years in DC. And I just think it's really strange that they have U-Hauls at the White House. The last time we saw U-Hauls at the White House, the last two times, was for Obama when he was leaving and for Trump when he was leaving. So if it isn't for Biden and his stuff, then it is going to be for 
Kamala maybe. Maybe she's resigning the vice presidency so she can focus on the campaign and disassociate herself from Biden's policies because that's what's holding her down right now and they know it. We'll have to watch, wait and see. But it's freaking pretty bizarre if you ask me that they have U-Hauls at the White House on the day of the DNC and Biden's giving a speech tonight. Scripted on a teleprompter. Kamala's speech is going to be scripted on a teleprompter. She's not taking any interviews. She's not doing any interviews. No live press conferences. They did show her taking a question today and they asked her this is outrageous. They asked her what her economic plan was. How is she going to implement her economic plan she introduced? So she went off on a 30 second barrage of mumble jumbo. And instead of the reporter saying, you didn't answer my question, she asked her about what she would like to eat or something like that. But how, no, she she asked her about how she felt about the polls being three points up nationally. That's what they asked Kamala as a follow-up question when she didn't answer the question about how she was going to implement her economics plan. Because Kamala doesn't know. And these people are coddling her. So... As far as I know, we're getting two debates two of them. We're going to see what the polling does after the convention this week. Kamala's expected to get a bump and whether or not she gets one, the polling companies are going to give her one. They already have. So basically the media at this point is if it makes Trump bleed, it leads. So New polling comes out and the media goes into this whole thing about Trump's finished, his supporters are deserting ship, jumping ship, it's a sinking ship, and of course none of that's true. But this is all aimed towards independents that haven't decided yet. And Kamala can't win without those. So they can say they're winning in Pennsylvania if they want to, but the real polling says they're not. Trump is not losing Pennsylvania. Kamala doesn't win Pennsylvania. She's literally finished. Now, if she picks up North Carolina and Georgia, then she's okay, but that's not going to happen. So the media is trying to make it look like, you know, they're selling hope, you know? That's what they're doing. Hope and change. They're selling hope. Kamala's in this. She's got a chance. So. What Trump needs right now, and I would really hate to see it, but I'm saying it would benefit him, is if Iran did a really big major attack on Israel and we get sucked into a battle with Iran because that's going to crush the oil markets. Not just a little bit. I mean, everybody's gas is going to go up, heating oil, everything. And Biden crapped away our strategic oil reserves to lower gas prices for the election. So they haven't replenished them. So a lot of this can go ugly really quickly, but it would help Trump. I think uh, Trump's going to be fine anyway. Because, you know, here's the other thing I was going to talk about before the lightning. Was uh, if you look at the other polling they've done about favorability. Who do you trust more with this? And uh, Trump beats her 
hugely on the economy. I was watching that earlier on CNN. They said that Trump is 76% favorability for the economy, Kamala Harris 35%. 35%. Trump on the border, 70%. Kamala, 30%. And, of course, uh, um, the uh, world stage, the uh, foreign policy. Trump, 68%. Kamala, 30 whatever percent, 32. So there's your, there's your real polls, okay? Right now, people are just being asked, do you like Trump or don't, or you don't like Trump? That's basically what the polling questions are. They can frame it in different ways and say, who are you voting for? But it's basically whether or not somebody likes Trump or hates Trump. So that's why Trump needs to pound the economy. He keeps pounding that, he'll be fine. And I think somebody finally got through to him because his entire talk today was about the economy. So. He will be fine. And you know, his, uh, he did kind of have a rough start as far as getting his message out. I don't think he knows how to, uh, you know, compete with a woman. I just don't think he does. He hasn't had that since Hillary, but he was battling his way up, trying to make a name for himself. And he was attacking Hillary all the time. And he was trying to do the same thing with Kamala. But the Republican Party has contacted him and said, hey, you've got to stop doing that. You know, you need to run on policies. You were already president. What are you trying to prove, you know? Run on your record you had. And the DNC knows that because one of the first things they attacked at the DNC tonight was Trump's record on COVID. Talking about how many people died. And the simple fact is more people died with Biden as president. You can look that up. That's readily available for everybody. So right now they have smoke and mirrors, lies and bullshit. And um, most of the American public that matters is going to see through all of that stuff if they haven't already. And Trump is leading in the polls right now. So he just needs to bolster that and get the machine going, you know. I mean, there's no need to attack Kamala because she's dumb, because she is. So he has switched to attacking her as a communist, socialist, far left extremist radical, tying her in with California, and that's what he needs to do. So he's doing that. So, Trump upticked in the polls as soon as Tim Walls was named her VP pick because people saw that he's a radical extremist leftist. So this is gonna work. Usually vice presidential picks don't affect poll numbers, but he affected her numbers only by about a point, but that's important. So. I think Trump needs to extend an olive branch to RFK. RFK is not going to win Jack. I think RFK is starting to understand that. He went to the Kamala Harris campaign. Kamala Harris said, you know, I'd like to have a position in the White House. He was ignored. So that's not going to happen. I don't know what he expected. He's been anti-vaccine, anti-CDC, talking about government corruption, and communists don't want to hear about that. So, that's just a fact with that. They don't want to hear about that. They want team players that are going to do what they're told, and RFK is not one of those. So, however, Trump offered him a position basically saying, you know, 
and you finally decide that you want to drop out of this race, you can have a position in the White House and really pursue what you want to with government regulations on vaccines and cleaning up this uh, vaccine and CDC problems that we have with misinformation and mismanagement. And uh, a videographer in the room with RFK Jr. recorded that phone call on video. Trump was on speakerphone. And Trump was speaking to him the day after his assassination attempt, if you can believe that. So that's the other uh, fake news item. Was a news media story said, you know, where's Trump after the assassination attempt? And for some reason, they ran an older video of him playing golf. So that one even fooled me. Because, like, well, you know, the guy was almost killed. You know, he probably just wanted to fall back on something that he almost lost forever. He loves playing golf. Turns out he didn't go play golf that day. He was doing something else in New Jersey. So it was all, it was all a lie by the media. Because they were trying to push the fact that Trump wasn't very injured from the shot. Okay, that's, that was the premise for that. Most normal people would say, okay, well, maybe he just needed to some time alone to do something he likes, get his head together. You know, Ted Williams used to love fly fishing in Maine. And uh, people like that go and do things that they like doing when things aren't going well. So, but the media was pushing that, like, you know, that Trump was faking the assassination. He wasn't really injured, you know? And they were trying to push the fact that he wasn't really shot, remember? It was a piece of glass, and they were trying to, they were trying to dehumanize him and not let him be humanized with the public. So that was part of the propaganda for that. Oh yeah, he must be really seriously shook up. It wasn't really an assassination attempt. You know, he's out playing golf for crying out loud. How bad could it have been? That's what they were trying to push. So anyway, uh, Trump was talking with RFK on speaker, and RFK did apologize that the videographer that was there, not associated with this campaign, recorded that and released it. He apologized to Trump for that. So I think the reason why he apologized for that is he does want a position in the Trump cabinet. So it would not surprise me, and it would help Trump by about 1% if uh, RFK would step down from, from running. You know, and I understand RFK has done a lot of legal battles to get on ballots. He's got a lot of his heart and soul put into that. But the reality is gonna set in that he's not gonna win. And he's just going to hurt Trump by one percentage point, which could be the difference in winning in a close election. Now, if the election is not close, well, who cares? You know, it won't matter. So, so we're going to have to wait and see what the hell happens here. So we will survive, we'll be okay. It just needs to hammer the economy, fill in the holes with the other stuff sometimes, but talk about the economy, try to give out the most factual information you can about inflation, price of food, because all of that is factual, but if you overinflate what's wrong, the media is going to pounce on that, and it's going to be negative. So, Trump needs to be really smart this year. Keep his head. Stop attacking Kamala, saying she's dumb. Because you're basically saying she's a dumb woman. And, you know, because she's a person of color, it's like, well, does Trump think black people are dumb? You know, just, you can avoid that entirely just by saying, look, she's been there for three and a half years. And you can't afford to eat. 
Why would you want more of this? Keep hammering that. People will get it. So that's what he needs to do, in my opinion. Uh, several Republicans have been telling him that. You know, they don't want to start having to worry about their own races for re-election for Senate. Talking about, what do you think about Trump's comments about this or that? They're going to have to say, well, Trump shouldn't be saying that. That creates disunity and, you know, Trump needs to be smarter than that. Yes, Trump is angry. He's got a right to be. He's been screwed over. This has cost him hundreds of millions of dollars that he's lost. He's not going to get back. And he's damn angry about it. I understand that. You know, that's what Trump said in one of his recent rallies. You know, I'm attacking her because I'm angry with her. I don't like her. The Biden White House has did this to me and she's in on it. Well, what's the best way to get her back? Eliminate her from the election. So, you know, take the high road. Don't play into the media's uh, web of propaganda, because that's what he's doing. That might actually be costing him a point in the polling right now. So, you know, he's got to worry about his legal stuff. He's got a sentencing coming up. You know, and if he gets sentenced, he's already been convicted. So, I don't expect the sentencing to hurt him. If they actually want to sentence him to jail, it's actually going to help him. Because he's should be able to get out on bail for that. But you never know, with an activist judge, he can do what he wants, literally. He can do what he wants, it doesn't matter. There's going to be no repercussions for him because of separation of powers. There's a higher court that can rip up what he did. But in the meantime, until the election, it'll be fact. It'll be, it'll be what it is. So, it's very... Uh, very much a smart thing the Democrats did but they did martyr him and uh, you know I think uh, I think Trump ought to discuss the assassination attempt more because the media has left that out they're not showing it they're not talking about it and uh, there's even been a magazine that actually took the photograph, the famous one, with him with his fist in the air. And they actually changed the faces on the Secret Service people to smiling. Smiling faces, like it really wasn't a serious thing. They doctored the photos. Absolute insanity. So... These people are morally bankrupt. We would expect nothing less from these people. I hear an airplane overhead. That means that the thunderstorm is far enough away for them to fly. At least I would hope so. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna end my walk at about five miles up ahead. I'm only going to talk with you for a short distance more. Sorry about the shorter walk tonight. I'm sure you understand. Whoa, that was pretty good. That's what I'm talking about right there.
five. So that was five miles away. Uh, I counted the fives as two and a half miles away. So it looks to me like I made the right decision. I'm going to be home soon. So anyway, I want to thank everybody for walking with me. Have a beautiful night. Enjoy the week. Stay safe and look out for one another. And God bless. And remember, Jesus rules. Bye-bye, everybody. Ciao.